All right, welcome to Rick's Corner. I'm surrounded here by uh, animals. I got monkeys, gorillas, uh, teddy bears. Uh, I got dogs in the house that flop on the ground and a whole menagerie of pets. And I'll explain to this later on. But the biggest pet I have and the biggest animal is Jay Bednar, who wanted to come over and sit with me in my toy store and talk about bodybuilding and how these bears got so big on protein because some of these are six feet tall and they've grown like overnight just on taking protein and a little creatine. So uh, we're going to talk about how that happens. Got it. You're sitting awfully high in that chair. Are you taller or something? I think I did grow a little bit. God, I'm feeling short. <laughs> Here's what I want to ask you, because you've been training for how many years now? Uh, about 14. Okay. The question I have from a lot of people who ride in is they want to build mass and they want to lose body fat. There's a fine line on how you do that. I mean, because when you increase your calories and you increase your food, of course you can put on mass. Right. But you put on belly fat. Sure. So there's got to be a way to knock that, keep that from happening, um, and still build the mass and still reduce the amount of waste because the idea of bodybuilding back in the day, not so much nowadays, was the small waist and broad shoulders. Right. Going back to the days of Steve Reeves, he had shoulders a yard wide and a, white, a waist like this, which was the V taper. Right. Today's bodybuilders have gotten away from that. Absolutely. A lot. Yeah. So I mean, it's focused <clears throat> mostly on just getting massive regardless of, of where it is, you know, and, and, and the waste has gone with that. Just right. Like you said, from the massive eating. Right. And powerlifters, it's okay because that's what they do. Right. They don't. I mean, they're not judged on how they look. It's just right. if they can move the weight or not. So in your in your mind, because uh, you train down for contests as well, and then you 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 do you train to gain a lot of weight and size in order to put that bulk on and then cut back? Because back in the day, said, oh yeah, I'm in a bulking season. I'm going to bulk up. But for every pound you put on, you got to take it off again. Exactly. So what, how do you counter that? What do you do for that? Uh, well, you know, I I did get stuck in that a lot. Um, and my last off season before my my contest and then my surgeries and everything i was i was all the way up to 280 pounds ended up competing at 230 yeah. so uh, 50 pounds of unnecessary weight you know yeah. which which was way too much and and like i said i kind of got into the i was just like i was eating every 2 hours like everything i could shovel in and and hey i put on a lot of size but put on a lot of fat with it so getting ready for contest was hard yeah you know? sure and i still you know i dieted for a long time and i still didn't get where i needed to be for contest shape um, so now my approach is completely different. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay within 15 or 20 pounds of contest weight and yeah. at all times, you know, so. Well, the key is to put on quality muscle. Absolutely. And, and you and I both see guys in the gym, young guys that come in and, you know, they're, they're taking everything they can and lifting really heavy and not right. doing the proper form and they gain a bunch of fat and they get a bunch of pimples with it. Right. You know. Absolutely. <clears throat> and they're not getting quality muscle. They think because the scale says they're 220 that they're big and muscular, but they're really not. Right. In order to look muscular, they need to cut down about 30 pounds. Exactly. And so it's uh, it's based a lot on, on diet, for sure. Oh, 100%. Now, when, you, when you're 50 pounds heavier, um, did you notice a, a huge fat content? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was, at that point, I was up to probably 17% body fat, mm -hmm. which for a bodybuilder is absolutely horrid. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, uh, I was a, I had a head the size of a watermelon. Yeah. I was strong as an ox. I could move anything I wanted to, but I look like crap, you yeah. know? It's a good strength feeling, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you feel strong. You feel good all the time. Absolutely. How did that body weight affect your knees? Um... I mean, definitely, definitely made it a little bit harder to get around. It more aches in the knees, and yeah. Uh, I mean, like I'd walk from my car to class and be drenched in sweat. So I mean, and yeah. be huffing and puffing. So it's just unnecessary. It's funny because I, I need a knee replacement. It's really bone on bone, and I've dropped a few pounds and I feel better. But when right. I pick up even a twenty pound dumbbell right. to walk to put them back, I feel the extra weight in my knees. Absolutely. And so I'm thinking about people who are overweight. They've got to feel it. They've got to have like really bad joints from carrying that extra weight around. Absolutely. Got to be killer. Oh yeah, and you can work your legs hard and do extensions and all that and keep the strength in, but still, because of the bad joints, the extra body weight and the extra pounds makes a difference there. Absolutely. Well. Now, when you cut back, you know, I mean, you can tell these people you you gain all this weight and then you cut back, it's almost twice as hard to lose it. Absolutely. It takes a long time. Oh yeah. Well, not only you know just the massive eating, not only does it put on the extra body fat, which then you have to diet down and take all that extra weight off. Yeah. But it, you you do a lot more internal damage by eating that you know in terms of decreasing your insulin sensitivity, um, increasing your leptin resistance, which are all major hormones that play a function in in controlling body fat and decreasing body fat. Explain that because I'm not sure how those do work. Okay, so I mean the easiest one when, when you're constantly bombarding yourself with calories, right. the insulin you're ins you're going to become insulin resistant. Um, which basically means your muscles are going to stop, your, the receptors for insulin are going to stop being as responsive to the insulin um, hormone. So when you eat something, then it, it's more likely for it to go to fat. Because your fat, you, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you take in sugar, your body 
uh, sends out insulin okay. to decrease your blood glucose. Um, if your muscles are sensitive to it, the receptors are going to push push the glucose into the muscles. Okay. And, and that that they become sensitive post workout or first thing in the morning when they're depleted in glycogen. Okay. Um, however, if you are insulin resistant, then that blood glucose is going to bypass the muscle because they don't they're, they don't need it. Right. They're going to go right to fat. How do you know when you're at that point? I mean, what tells you physically, or how do you know that you're at that point where you can't do that? An easy thing is like you know when you eat sh when you eat something high in sugar and yeah. and and you get your veins swell up, mm -hmm. you get that pump real easily. Mm -hmm. That means you're insulin sensitive. Okay. Your, your muscles are taking it up. If you can eat something like that and you're not really feeling much, that more than likely you're you're insulin resistant. And so what do you do in that case? Well, that that's where you got to really decrease any amount of sugar that you're taking. It basically, like go on like a pre-contest diet. Okay. You know what I mean? That just same like kind of idea. Decrease your calories a little bit. Go on a pre-contest <clears throat> pre diet. Uh, case in point, I just just started my brother-in-law. He's he's just starting his contest prep. Um, I'm doing his nutrition, and and it took us about two weeks to get his insulin sensitivity back, and now he's noticing. Oh wow, everything's ramping up again. Right. He's hungry more often. You know, that's another thing. If you're not hungry and you don't, you're like forcing food in, you're probably insulin resistant as well. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So like that. Um, how much water weight do you gain on something like that when you're when you're going heavy? Um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm pretty sodium sensitive. I hold a lot of water. Pretty much with when I eat carbs, it also, you know, when I when I start my pre-contest diet, if I if I'm going low carb, I'll, I'll lose probably 10 pounds in the first two weeks just of extra water weight that I carry around. I can do that in three days. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you can do it. But I mean, yeah. And, you know. and it is water weight because the, the, the thing with carbs like rice or pasta right. or potatoes, it's like a sponge, and when you eat it and you drink exactly. it, it, it just fills out. Right. And you end up holding water, and then of course when you deplete that for a few days, and you just pee all the water out and it goes away. Right. But there's always a little bit that you hold anyway. Absolutely, of course. Um, so your diet, if, if so, I'm, I've always gotten back to people say, well, when you trained back in the 70s, you had the high protein, low carb. What did you guys do for energy? Well, we ate fats. Right. And and a lot of people, they, they say, oh, there's a no-fat yogurt place, or this has no fat. Right. I don't want that. Right. I want the fat. Sure. It's the no sugar that I want. Right. You know, I don't want right, that sugar. Exactly. And it's just, it's a mistaken thing for all of you out there who see that, say it's low in fat, low in fat. Okay, maybe that's good for your cholesterol, maybe it's not. I don't know. But I know that the old method was you needed the fats in order to, sure. to burn, and the carbs you depleted. Right. And even the protein I used to take with water, which I still do. I don't even mix it. I wouldn't mix it with milk or anything at all. Right. But um, that's how that theory works. And that someone wrote to me, and they said, would the 70s diet work on a bodybuilder today? Well, it's the same well, body. Yeah, same physiology. I mean, it's the same car and changing oil. Uh, it's the same physiology. Yeah, you, you're going to eat like you did then. You're going to have progress like you did then. Right now, today there's a lot more supplements than there were back in the day. Absolutely. Back then they had what, Rio Blair's protein, which I don't think you know about, but it was like really huge. Okay. It, he had he had Larry Scott and Don Haworth on it. Arnold okay. got on. I got on it. It was a really good tasting protein, and he mixed it with cream. Okay. And the idea was the fat and the protein. Right. right. And it Absolutely. was very very expensive. Um, we got it comped us to try it, but it worked. Now today there's somebody trying to come out with a formula again. Okay. And they're charging like three hundred dollars for like five pounds. Oh wow. It's ridiculous. But it worked. Right. I mean, it was good stuff. Sure. So it's the protein and the high fat and the low carb. Right. And you don't have to worry about energy because the fat gives you the energy. So for you to ask, how do you, I don't believe you did this every day. I mean, I'm telling you what we did and they don't believe it. Right. And so why, do I, why would I lie about something right. like that? This is what we did. So Sundays were the junk day. So you had the one right. day a week you junk. And sure. you know how that goes. You can gain five pounds. Oh, easily. You just blow up overnight. Absolutely. And then Monday you go to the gym and you're full of gas and Tuesday you're back down to normal. Again. Right. Do you follow that theory now? Uh, in terms of low carbs, yeah, I I did for a, a, a while. Um, I found for me, I, I mean, honestly, for most humans, just based on our physiology, it's not optimal for for maximum muscle gain. Okay. Um. So, but I'm very specific with my carbs in terms of timing. So, the, I take the majority of my carbs. You know, basically about two thirds of my carb intake for the day around my workout. So you know, a little bit pre workout. And then a lot of them intra workout, okay. and then a, and then another good serving post workout. Okay. And then the rest of the day, then I go pretty much low carb. You know, eat more fat. Okay. So, but you've just got to, that, and that's really controlling that insulin response is how you can gain without gaining body fat. Okay. So what that's about what about late night? Do you eat at night? Yeah. Yeah, I always eat right before I go to bed. So always. Right. And so many people say, nothing but water after seven o'clock. I don't believe that because you're going to have four hours. Four hours of watching TV, not, right. not really, but four hours of time, seven or seven to eleven, whatever, right. uh, twelve, and then you have the next seven, six, seven hours of sleeping. Right. But you're not eating, and that's the time your body's rebuilding. So that's the time you need something to be going through. Absolutely. And so, what is it you take before bedtime? 
uh, typically I'll do either. <clears throat> uh, I, I always want protein and fat. I, I don't do carbs before I go to bed. No, I won't either. Um, so in in terms of that, pretty much after seven, I won't do carbs. Um, you know, unless I I work out late or whatever. Right. You know. Right. Um, but typically it'll be like. I don't know, a few whole eggs and a cup of cottage cheese. There you go. Um, full fat cottage cheese or, uh, you know, ground beef and, and cottage cheese, something like that. Okay. I want a really slow digesting protein. So, I, or, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm lazy before I go to bed, then I'll have a couple of scoops of casein. So I have yeah. that slow yeah. digesting protein. To That's the easiest night. way out. Yeah. I just take that. So. Uh, I've had also people write in and say, when you were on that diet, when we were back in the day, I don't see any fiber or vegetables. We had vegetables, but I, I take fiber every night. Do you take any fiber? Um, I eat, I eat a, pretty healthy amount of broccoli i don't take any okay any supplements for fiber so okay i eat a lot of cruciferous greens so but i get you do, I get eat, you do have to have some fiber oh absolutely yeah. absolutely especially uh, with the amount of protein we eat exactly. absolutely it's really important yes <clears throat> if you don't have broccoli oatmeal is a fiber uh then i take this metamucil at night i mix it actually with my protein okay i yeah. mix it with a vanilla protein and a little bit of water and it tastes like an orange julius right and right it's good and it keeps your day moving when you get up in the morning there you go so nowadays you're eating what six times a day yeah, six to seven. And we talked about your training before. You're training every day. Yeah, pretty much. Take a day off? Uh, when I feel like I need it. If I'm feeling real run down, yeah. then I'll take it off. That's yeah. how I felt yesterday. I felt horrible. Yeah. So I went to the movies and I fell asleep there. Right. <laughs> Missed the whole movie. Gotcha. Well, okay. That's what I wanted to know. And I, I wanted to relay that to the fans out there because they, they are starving for information on sure. training. Nobody's giving them good advice. I try to get good advice here. And I trust what you're saying because you're proof of what you've done. And um, I want to thank you for being on here, but I also want to introduce you to these guys. Um, would you hand me that little, it's the only white one I have, but I'm with this company called BigPlush.com, and they're making these huge teddy bears, and they have gorillas and giraffes and monkeys and all kinds of stuff, and I know all you guys out there have girlfriends, and Valentine's Day is coming up soon, and if you want to be a hero, give your girl a big teddy bear. They're five and six feet tall, BigPlush.com. And they'll put any type of t-shirt you want on here. If you have a custom one, they can make it for you. They have seven-foot large roses made out of fabric that, that, if you use my name, they'll throw it in. But I think it's pretty cool. And, and I have one that's a floppy dog you can lay on. I have a, the gorilla I think I'm going to put in my bed and sleep next to him at night <laughs> if he doesn't smell too bad. No, but I, actually, I think they're kind of fun. And women love this kind of stuff. If you want to be a hero, go to BigPlush.com, tell them that Rick sent you, and get them a teddy bear. Go on the catalog because there's other animals to choose from. They have all kinds of stuff. Giraffes, you name it. I really like this, and um, I think it's kind of cool, huh? I'm going to get one for my wife. Yeah, I think, you know, just get a little bicep on it, we'll be good to go. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you for watching Rick's Corner. It's great having Jay here. We'll do it again. If you have any questions to fire into him, you can email me and let me know, and we'll, we'll answer all your questions. And thanks for watching Rick's Corner. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> cool. Okay. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.